the 3.30 show. Here we are again, elbow deep in science. We uh, had opportunity to get out and take a sample from the Schoolcraft River this morning. That would be the Schoolcraft River just south of Lake Plantagenet. I have the coordinates here. And we're going to do a, a bioassessment of that. And what that means is we're going to look at the, the insects and animals that we found in our sample, um, which consisted of 20 jabs with a D-net and captured in a bucket, brought here just a few hours ago. And we're going to see how this this uh, this stream assesses out here with our with our biological pollution intolerance index. Now, if you've been with our show before, you've seen how these charts work. There's essentially four levels of tolerance here. The first level is the highest level, and it takes a ranking of four. Those are animals, insects mainly, that are intolerant of pollution. You will not find these in the worst of waters. And then we have the secondary level, which has a weighting of three, and these are animals that we have found. To be over time and through experience to be moderately intolerant so they could just take a lot of the different waters that we see around the, the north woods up here but not in the best of them um, generally speaking there's oxygen deprivation issues with some of these animals um, and then we have the group three animals which are the ones that are fairly tolerant you see these in a lot of places you see these in some even in some stressed waters and um, and so we put those on our index and we rank those to two. And then we have other things that are very tolerant to pollution, and those are things you can find in practically any water. Red-tailed maggots is one of my favorite examples. You'll find them in sewage sludge. Um, so this system favors two things to get our ranking. Um, the number of intolerant, pollution intolerant animals, they get that four and that adds up faster and higher. The moderately intolerant, but we also on this scale favor diversity. We have generally spoken this before and said ecological integrity follows along with biological diversity, which means the more different kinds of animals we see, often the healthier the system is. It makes sense because that means that if something happens, say for instance, there's a, a scourge upon stoneflies, which we've seen, of course, and that's usually oxygen deprivation too, then we, uh, we still have other things that can fill in their niches. So that's part of the way we're going to do this. But now we've done this, we've had this crowdsourced for us. We had a bunch of kids helping us find things. Their great eyes have helped us along here through this assessment. And what we do here is we start dumping out the buckets and we isolate. We keep isolating until we find things. Like today we found things like mayfly nymph, caddisfly larva. We've got uh, damselfly nymph, dragonfly nymph, all those things we love to see, of course, those that eat the mosquitoes especially. Scuds of plenty. That's the uh, the shrimp of the waters of the north. A lot of the small fish. In fact, we did find quite a few small fish shiners. They're not on our index, but they are eating those scuds. And we also found midge larva, black fly larva, a couple of worms, and some snails. And we know there's something in there we still haven't seen. And here's why we haven't found everything so far. Because when we add up our our, our monitoring data sheet, we end up with a with eight with two taxa in the first intolerant one. We get an eight. We have three in there, that's a nine. We get two there, that's a six. We got two more, that's a two. Um, so our, to our total comes to 17, 23, 25, very well above the 23 for an excellent water. So we aren't surprised. We've, we've monitored this water before and found it to be in the excellent or just reaching towards that excellent level. Um, I was out there this morning and the water was cool still. It had a lot of... Uh, pretty good flow for as dry as it's been. There's um, there's water up to my chest in the middle of the, the Schoolcraft River there, which is pretty typical. Um, a lot of weeds have grown up on the edge, but it looked pretty good. And um, this is an area that's out in a rural area, south of Lake Bemidji. There's a lot of the town of Bemidji, Lake Bemidji. So we're giving that a pretty good rating. What else did we learn today, Spencer, about during our assessment? What did we come up with? Here was one of our stars. There's our big dragonfly right there. Can you move in on that guy? on camera we don't even need a magnifier for that we found a lot of small stuff which is why we've got our our, our magnifying lenses up but look at that beautiful creature these guys he keeps looking at me that beautiful creature is going to become the meal of one of our favorite fish in a little bit but if we'd have had more time we should assume there's more where he came from this would have become a great big darner and it would have been a great dragonfly that would have gone out and eaten maybe 100 mosquitoes a day so we don't want to get those out of the mix we just want to make sure that we count them as being part of these uh, very precious and, and, and speculatively fabulous excellent waters um what are our surprises today well 
not many. We expected good water. We got good water. Um, we found a lot of different main What was the curious thing you found, Spencer, that you liked? The hammerhead uh, mayfly, was that the one that you used? No, flat. Fathead, flathead, and that's kind of a, can we have that isolated here somewhere we can look at that? Uh, on the, it's over it's here. on the screen right now. Oh, on screen right now, making an appearance. There it is right there, I'm gonna bring it in. Making an appearance, just as we've talked about it. There it is right there in our digital scope. You can see the gills are working hard to say, keep oxygenated in that very thin water, which of course is warming up and having less oxygen available, but uh, we're happy to see those guys. We found those before out here, but it's quite, quite a cute creature. Mayfly, not being a particularly great name for it, because where are we at here? We're in August already, and this thing still hasn't emerged out of the waters. It's it's looking like it wants to get out this year, so it's going to be an end uh, an end creature. And while these animals, many of them, will spend more of their lives in the water than they will out of the um, flying around eating mosquitoes. But the reason why we like this kind of an assessment, um, we go out to these waters and we do a chemical assessment. And that gives us a picture of how the water is right at this moment. But these animals that have spent months, sometimes half a year or more, in these waters um, will give us a picture of that entire time. So if an incident occurred, it'll show on these animals. Some of these intolerant creatures won't survive an incident. We don't believe there was one, but had there been one, that would show in this kind of an assessment. Um, we found lots of caddisflies again. Those are one of our favorite creatures. Always the dragons and the damsels are our favorites. Um, that's that's the summation of where we were at today. So do you want to add anything to this uh, this dialogue today? We're putting together a video log of what Spencer did on his summer vacation, by the way. So we'll get him out there in a week or two or whenever we can next and get him to show it. And this was uh, brought together with 20 jabs of the DNN. I think we mentioned that already. Um, We'd love to do this every day for you because this is what we favor, getting in the water or getting on the water. Um, I want to see this guy. Let's show him this guy. Look at that. Look at that happy, healthy dragonfly. <laughs> you got it on camera? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we like. Again, one of our favorite fish is going to have that for a meal later on, but... But that's okay, because I don't think we're going to be able to get that back in the water today, so we're going to save its life for food for fish. I found that almost every fish, whether it be tropical, salt water, or one of the natural fish tanks, fish that we hold, will eat that. Right now we know we've got a hungry purse challenger who's been eating some of, our, some of our darters, so we're going to have to maybe feed it something. That's probably bigger than that darter it ate, isn't it? <laughs> All right, I think we're going to call that today's assessment. Wind up the show, Spence. What do you think? Are we there? Can we do it? There's a good Excellent good waters there in the Schoolcraft River. So, uh, you people up there in Lake Plantagenet know that your water's feeding in or are doing their job, giving you good, clean water, and it's still still running thick enough for, for a good, healthy uh, biological population here. So, thanks for tuning in. We're Headwater Science Center. We're currently open uh, seven days a week. Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 5. On Sundays, 1 to 5. Come by and visit us. Um, maybe come by when we do an assessment like this. We, we find the kids like this, and they're good at it. So, uh, so maybe, uh, maybe we can figure out a time 